Welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday. I'm here in the sanctuary of Lutheran Church of the Cross in Calgary, but we acknowledge that we are not all in the same place, and so we ask you to be responsible for honoring and acknowledging the land where you are this morning. The church is on the land known for millennia as Mokinsis, where the Bow River meets the Elbow River. This is the traditional territory of the Nitsiipi, or Blackfoot people, who comprise the people of Treaty Se the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta. And we acknowledge these nations who make their home on this land. They include the Siksika, the Pigani, the Gaina, the Sutna, and the Yahe people. And also the Nakoda people, which include the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. For thousands of years, people have gathered on this land to tell stories, sing songs, share ideas, and build community. In the spirit of generosity and welcome, and to honor those who have lived here for many millennia, we also gather on this land to tell stories, sing songs, share ideas, and build community. This is a live-streamed communion service. So if you are at home, we invite you to get your elements ready for communion. And during that communion time, we will commune you first. If you are viewing this as a recording, which means sometime after 2 o'clock on Sunday, the communion portion of this service will be edited out. We only celebrate communion in the same time. So we appreciate your um, understanding of that. And if you would like to celebrate communion, we invite you to join us any Sunday at 10 a.m., live or in person. Welcome to worship. the hope to which God has called you, the power of God at work in Christ, and the spirit of wisdom and re revelation be with you all. Awesome. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his, his death. death. We were baptized therefore with him by baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Please be seated. We give thanks for all your faithful people who have followed the light of your word throughout centuries into our time and place. As we remember these people, strengthen us to follow Christ through this world until we are carried into the harvest of eternal life. 
we remember the newborn. A reading from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what love Abba God has lavished on us in letting us be called God's children. Yet that in fact is what we are. The reason the world does not recognize us is that it never recognized God. My dear friends, now we are God's children, but it has not been revealed what we are to become in the future. We know that when it comes to light, we will be like God, for we will see God as God really is. All who keep this hope keep themselves pure, just as Christ is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We give thanks for the newly born. Patrick Moser. Mason Douglas Kerr Hull. Jessica Christensen. Vanessa Christensen. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the wonder of new life and for the mystery of human love. As you took children in, in your arms and blessed them, so no, now we ask for your blessing upon these newly born. Amen. We remember the newly departed. A reading from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 to 23. In Christ we were willed an inheritance, for in the decree of God, and everything is administered according to the divine will and counsel, we were predestined to praise the glory of the Most High by being the first to hope in Christ. In Christ you too were chosen, when you heard the good news of salvation, the word of truth, and believed in it. You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the pledge of our inheritance, the deposit paid against the full redemption of a people who are God's own, to the praise of God's glory. From the time I first heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of the holy ones, I have never stopped thanking God for you and remembering you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation to bring you to a rich knowledge of the Creator. I pray that God will enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see the hope this call holds for you, the promised glories that God's holy ones will inherit, and the infinitely great power that is exercised for us who believe. You can tell this from the strength of God's power at work in Jesus, the power used to raise Christ from the dead and to seat Christ in heaven at God's right hand, far above every sovereignty, authority, power, or dominion and above any other name that can be names, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. God has put all things under Christ's feet and made Christ, as ruler of everything, the head of the church, and the church is Christ's body. It's the fullness of the one who fills all of creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We give thanks for the newly departed. Linda Burwell. Reverend Clark Wilkie. Vela Feig. Anna Gattinger. John Burke. Alvira Martin. Patricia Hegerath.
Clark Hansen. Gary Bassey. Mike Kerr. Edie Hendrickson. Reverend Albert Holt. Shannon Hebert. Shirley Pepler. Will Sanders. Lorene Boisson. Velma Holt. Ron Pletke. Suzanne Vosniak. Mary Ellen Monula. Walter Dreger. John Ravenhill. Larry Hoogie. Matt Peters. Jean Hoffman. Marshall Stewart. Bruce Nodaker. Lorraine Jackal. Bill Crookshank. Margaret Taylor. Klaus Dreger. Lyle Harkey. Aaron Wall. Thomas Hewton Waters.
Emilian LePage. Nico Goldblum. Let us pray. O oh Lord, support us all the day of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. We acknowledge and honor all those who have died from COVID-19. We give thanks for our loved ones who have preceded us in the faith.
watch the snow fall I will listen to the wind And when the evening comes I will count the stars I will count the stars I will count the stars Support us all the days, days of this troubled life. I'm sorry. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside, and after he sat down and the disciples had gathered around, Jesus began to teach them. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who are mourning. They will be consoled. Blessed are those who are gentle. They will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. They will have their fill. Blessed are those who show mercy to others. They will be shown mercy. Blessed are those whose hearts are clean. They will see God. Blessed are those who work for peace. They will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their struggle for justice. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. You are fortunate when others insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of slander against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward in heaven is great. They persecuted the prophets before you in the very same way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I was baptized on All Saints Sunday. 57 years ago. No, 58 years ago. <laughs> 58 years ago. I spent my whole life in the church. From before I even knew I had a life, I was in the church. So this is not the first time I've heard Jesus teaching called that we call the Beatitudes. I've heard this lots and lots and lots of times, and I'm sure that you have too. But every single time I hear this text... I have this inner rage that builds up inside of me that could be summed up in a question, in a word. And the, the question is, when? When? Blessed are those who are poor in, spe in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Well, when is that going to happen? Blessed are those who are mourning, they will be consoled. When? When? I mean, I've been waiting 57 plus years. The gentle inheriting the land? I don't think so. The gentle kind of get trampled and the land gets taken from them. Those who show mercy are sometimes called weak and treated that way. And it makes me think something even worse. 
that if we're not seeing mercy, maybe it's because we're not merciful. That if we don't see the face of God, maybe it's because we're not pure of heart. And if we don't know ourselves as the children of God, maybe it's because we're not working for peace. Or at least not as much as we think we are. Worse yet, I think maybe the Bible's not true. I mean, if you could live this long and not see these blessings that God is talking about, maybe it's not even true to begin with. But I know that whenever I get in that state of mind, I um, don't have a lot of confidence in the text I'm supposed to preach on. I turn to that text and I start looking at what's in the Bible right before that. So this is the beginning of chapter 5 that we heard this morning. The end of chapter 4 reads this way. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. So his his fame spread throughout Syria. And they brought to him all of the sick those who were afflicted with various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, and paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. And when Jesus saw these crowds, he went up the mountain And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then he began to speak to them and taught them, saying, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. When we look before the Beatitudes, we see what Jesus was doing. And he was using his power. He was using his agency to accompany people in all of their troubles. He healed them, he cured them, he talked with them, he walked with them, and apparently it was such an unusual thing for people to be doing that, someone to be doing that, that it attracted attention. It attracted a great crowd, and he went up the mountain to get away from people because he was being followed by a huge crowd of people from many, many cities. When Jesus sits down to teach his friends and his disciples, he is commenting on the use of his agency. He's commenting on what happens when you walk with people, when you live beside people, when you care about their troubles, when you work for justice when you comfort them in their sorrow. He is saying that when we see mourning, we must act. That we encounter injustice, we must use our agency to alleviate that injustice. He's telling his disciples that when you see persecution, you have to actually put yourself on the line to stop that persecution. He's saying that wherever we see struggle or hardship as followers of his, that what's called for is our agency, our action. And that when we act, when we use our agency, our power, our ability, our actions usher in the reign of God and people are blessed. We don't have to do much more than look in our own lives to see the truth of that. When you are hurting and a friend comes alongside you, you were blessed by the presence of your friend. When someone accompanies you in your suffering, you feel the nearness of God in the nearness of your friend. When strangers take up the cause of the injustice you feel personally, 
You experience being blessed. You experience something of inheriting the earth. And you begin to see the face of God. This is a difficult time to be the church. Many months of pandemic. Pine beetles eating our forest. Forest fires. Homophobia. Racism. Me too. Colonialism, corporate takeovers, capitalism, consumerism, political partisanship, death, illness, isolation, depression, pressure, stress, despair. These are our challenges. These are the challenges of right now, today. There are the challenges in our own homes. But these are also places of reign of God possibility. Jesus' life, his teaching, his death, and his resurrection were not only to ensure us that we would experience the reign of God in the life hereafter, They were not only so that we could get there with some measure of assurance. His life's work was also, and primarily, that the reign of God could break into our mess and get to us now. See, there was a wall between God's grace and mercy and kingdom life or reign of God life that was held at bay like a big wave of blessing on the other side that couldn't get to us. It was held at bay by sin and death. And Jesus' life, his teaching, his actions, his death, his resurrection, pierced that veil. It broke down that wall so that all of those good gifts of God could come flooding out upon us now. So that the reign of God could be ours now. I had posts to my son just yesterday. You know, I hate the Beatitudes because when? When are we going to experience that? And he said, oh, mom, you experience it when you're in heaven. And he didn't know it, but he was reminding me that the kingdom of God is near. That heaven is near. Heaven breaks into our world all the time. It's not just some hereafter where we hope to be reunited with all those that we've lost. It's a reality now. Are we mourning enough? To experience the blessing of consolation? Are we poor in spirit enough to know that the kingdom of heaven is ours? Are our hearts clean enough to see God? Do we experience persecution, and injustice enough to know that heaven belongs to us? Do we work for peace enough to know ourselves as God's children? Have we shown enough mercy to be blessed by God's mercy being shown to us? Yes, because we are God's. Yes, because we're God's people. Yes, because God's beloved community in action makes blessing real.
God's beloved community carries those blessings of grace through that rift in that wall into our lives every day. When Jesus sits down to teach his disciples, he's in a sense telling them, my comfort is enacted through you. It's enacted through my people. People experience the reality of my reign when they use my agency, when they accompany one another. It's a difficult time to be the church, but it's always a difficult time to be the church. When will we experience the truth of the Beatitudes? Oh, beloved people of God, <laughs> when we open our eyes, when we act for one another, on behalf of one another, with one another. The free gifts of God the blessings of the reign of God are ours now. And so we pray. Gracious God, help us to share our vulnerability with others. Help us to keep making openings for others to see our pain. And help us have eyes to see and ears to hear the persecution and the pain around us that we might step in with your divine power and your divine presence. We pray that you humble us so your comfort would be enacted in our lives. That your inheritance would be passed to others through our presence. That those who are poor in spirit would certainly see that the reign of God is theirs right now that those who are mourning would be consoled and that the gentle would be acknowledged for the peaceful lives they live and that they would inherit the land. Amen, and may it be so.
Blessed are they, the lowly ones, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they, who hunger and thirst, they shall have their fear. stand and let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every creature, of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. For what else do the people of God pray? We lift up all who are ill, especially those who are critically ill. And this morning we think of Debbie Chavik in Thunder Bay. For all those who are voting to elect leaders. For all who are grieving, persecuted, gentle, merciful, and are waiting to see signs of the reign of God. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, for the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Let us share a sign of the Lord's peace while respecting and maintaining social distancing. We pass the, pass the offering plate 
Uh, for those that are here in person, just a reminder, there's a plate there at the entrance. For those of you joining us online, uh, invite you, if you so wish, to hit the donate button on our website. Let us now hear an offering of music. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done on earth, earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. An announcement Please before be the blessing. Um, we're adhering to all the protocols for COVID-19, as you see. Um, one of those is about communal singing, and the main concern is that the earlier we start to sing in the service, the more that things build up in the room. So you'll notice that we start with instrumental, and then we have vocals near the end. So guess what? We invite you to sing the closing hymn. And then uh, upon singing, we'll exit the sanctuary. <laughs> uh, we actually invite you to not linger in the building at all. We'll immediately begin cleaning the air in here. But it's a beautiful day. So maintain social distancing and greet one another in the parking lot. And for those that are joining us online, just a reminder that we'll be opening the Zoom room. Uh, give us about 10 minutes after worship to get that going, uh, just for fellowship time. And then also... At, at, after about 15 minutes or so after that, uh, we'll have a sermon talk back. A blessing for us all. For the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen.
beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.